Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube video. This is the first ever Lendies or Plus video I've ever made. Um, um, let me, before I get into the, the subject, let me just get some chocolate. And uh, tell you something about the <coughs> this playlist. Playlist. So basically, in this playlist, I um, I am uh, pretending to be an instructor to instruct new drivers like Mitch how to drive in Omsi to in Euro Truck Simulator to and in Train Simulator. So that's basically. Um, uh, video game instruction video. So let's get into it. Now, so firstly, you need to install Umzi2 correctly. Um, well, that can usually be done from Steam. I recommend you to get Umzi2 from Steam instead of somewhere else. And um, now you may want to go to the manual in the first place but it's quite confusing and um, <coughs> because it's translated from German so uh, now let's start the game now the game takes a bit time to start so you need to be patient and wait Now, so the game now is almost started. Now, I recommend you putting this game onto an SSD, otherwise, it would take forever to load. Let me get my cup of tea. So, this is the sort of um, launching man menu the game hasn't launched yet this is the launcher now if your launcher appears too big so so that you can't see this bottom um bar of buttons so there are four buttons at the bottom if you can't see these you may want to adjust your display settings to a lower scale in order to do so go to display settings and it's usually this one it may be too zoomed if you can't see this entire thing <coughs> so now let's take a look at the um, launching menu there's a current driver you basically have different profile profiles but it doesn't really affect the, the in-game experience it's just for data recording as you can see, I normally don't look at this, so um, it records your too late, too early, bus stops and um, all sorts of different things that I never look at. And you can create a new profile. These are the profiles. Um, if you get a default profile, you're, you usually get um, this creepy profile picture but it doesn't affect the in-game situation and then over here you can change your time date and time and that's the some information about selected time now it depending on depending on the map you can have different events happening in different time over here you've got info on selected map that's a thumbnail of the map um, we are now going to load the default map, which is Berlin Spandau. Now that's the default map, and um, there's another default map, which is Grundorf. Now Grundorf, it's a very small map. It doesn't really have many things. It's it's got only one very short route, and that's usually for the purpose of a vehicle testing or some something you don't want to do with maps but what you want to do with some other things so um we are going to look at the um, berlin spandau in this video so you can load the last date of map which is your last situation load map without buses that is to load the map only the map without spawning any bus 
it doesn't mean that you can't drive any boss. It just means that at the beginning of the map there aren't any bosses, but you can spawn things. Load saved situation, which is the last time you save your game. Now the game usually auto saves. I I'm not quite sure about this option, so I'm really not sure. Um, <coughs> I think I've just pressed something wrong. Now let's go back to Berlin Spandau. Um, um, now first let me talk a bit about Berlin Spandau. It's it's designed for um, uh, 1986 to 1994, I guess. I'm not quite sure, but the route. You can see Route 5 becomes Route 130, and Route 92 becomes Route 137. And that is that happens sometimes in the within this period. I'm not quite sure when. So they are basically the same routes but in different time. And let's go through some options here. Now ticket selling, I'm going to turn ticket selling off here. Um, because I won't be explaining any ticket selling in this video. Link radio station drivers at move smooth view transitions. So smooth view transitions is basically it moves smoothly. I turned it off because it takes longer to move the view. And um, old view control. I don't know what that does. Automatic steering wheel center. Keyboard control, I don't recommend that. Automatic clutch, I don't use that. Actually, that only works. That only applies to buses with manual gearboxes. Most of the buses have automatic gearbox, so it doesn't really have that affect anything. Dynamic wheel speed is some sort of wheel speed that makes it more dynamic. Collisions. Now, um, for the purpose of this video, I will have collisions turned off. Now what I recommend you to do if you're a new driver I recommend you to have collisions on and if you're experienced I recommend it off. Maintenance condition in infinite I'm not quite sure what that does. Language is English. Oh what is that? Use current date and time that um, if you check these the time will reset to current date and time so um, it won't it's not a permanent settings, I guess. Now, there's uh, no automatic timetable analysis. Uh, visible driver in own bus. So that basically, if you're not in the driver's view, that is, if you're in passenger view or outside view, um, you can see the driver. Show ticket selling and passenger dialogues hints. So that basically what it does is that it shows some information of ticket selling here. Auto save show error messages. Now I have this turned off because it, it the errors happen quite a lot depending on what map you have. And if you check this, it keeps popping up the error. Now that's collision. You have to have this turned on in order to, in order to um do this or this. Performance reduce multi multi threading and load home map as start. Now low load home map as start. If you check that the entire map will be loaded uh, at the beginning of the game. Now I don't recommend that for large maps for example uh Gladbeck, uh Metropole Rule and Berlin X10. These are quite large maps because Umzi 2, uh, if you it's a 32-bit program, and if you run it on 64-bit Windows 10, which I guess is what most people have, it only you can only use two gigabytes. Unless if you patch it, in order to do so, you just Google um, Umzi 2 for GB patch. If you patch it, it can use up to 4 gigabytes and that's it. You can't use more than 4 gigabytes. So if you load a whole map at the start and your map is larger than, let's say, 3.5, larger than the larger than something so that... So basically, your entire game can't take more than 4 gigabytes of RAM after you patch it. 
So if your map and all the other things, because your map is loaded onto the RAM when you play it. So if you have a large map and you load it onto the RAM, if it's larger than or almost as large as 4 gigabytes, and you load the entire thing at start, it will crash or it won't run as smoothly. Now target frame rate is 60, it will never hit 60. <laughs> Max object visibility, so these are graphic settings. Uh, stencil buffer effect, I'm not sure what that does. Oh, by the way, shadows in this look very cringe, so I'll have that turned off. Um, particle system, which I guess is uh, e emission, I'm not sure. Real time reflections. If you click none, you can't see your mirrors. So uh, if you click full, if you click full if it's let full it will take up too much uh, power in the mirror which will make the game unsmooth so depending on what um situation you're at you you i recommend economy for most of the things but your mirror fps will drop your mirror frame rate won't be as high as full but if you click full your entire game frame rate won't be as high as economy so max map complexity so it basically loads it it um it adjusts how much stuff to load around you that's what it does depending on the map um and max object complexity it also it's also how how many things for example lamp post rubbish bin benches bushes things like these how many of these to uh, load around you so i'll put it at one and sun glow effect i don't want that on and these i've never touched this sound master volume oh that max sound count how many things to make noise that's what it is um ai traffic now there's road traffic and these are buses and these are that adjusts how many things to appear. I'm not quite sure what the numbers do, but that adjusts how many AI traffics there are and parked cars and human beings. Now, notice that if you drag it to zero, you will get no passengers. <coughs> Excuse me. Use reduced AI list. Now, it explains quite clearly. Now, keyboard control. Oh, these are all the rubbish. I added these two. Hang on, these two to control the third and the fourth door, uh, but you don't really have to have that. And um, game controller, oh, I'm stuck here. A uh, uh, game controller work quite weirdly. I recommend using keyboard or mouse or a wheel, but not a game controller. It takes time. To, if if it, if it shows that, don't close it. If at any point your game freezes, don't close it yet um because it may be it may just be loading now if the game freezes <coughs> what you do is you can go to task manager and uh to see you go here and see if umc2 or it the program is called umc.exe to see if it is moving it may just be loading stuff so if it is loading don't close it but I shouldn't have gone here. Okay, so now we're back. So, um, cancel that. So now, let's load map with our bosses. Hello, game. Now, if you somehow get stuck, Oh, there's a pop-up menu. It's, it sometimes doesn't pop up until you go away and then come back again. So now, uh, if you load map without bosses, it will ask you to... It will have this pop-up menu that, that asks you where you want to be. In this one, um, I am going to be at... Uberhof Rulebin. I don't know, I don't speak German well. So I'm going to go here. Now I do recommend you to familiarize yourself with the map. 
So it's especially the large ones. So you kind of know where you're at. Now, uh, in order to get the map, usually um, some games, I mean some maps, some maps, um, <coughs> uh, some maps when you install it, they come with a file which is the map of the map. And um, otherwise, you can actually Google Maps and see the map because a lot of maps are based on real life maps. Um, this one, I think it is based on, on real life, but because it's so old, it's very confusing. Now, uh, let me talk you through some mouse controls. Like what I just did, I moved, I moved my camera, and in order to do so, you, you hold the scroll button. So you know the thing you use to scroll, instead of scrolling, you, you press it down in order to move around like this so left right up and down in order to uh, zoom in you right click you right click right click drag down to move to zoom in drag up to move, zoom out um, uh, so you use right click to zoom scroll button to move about the center now we are currently in F4 view. There are F1, F2, F3, and F4 views. F1, F2, F3 are fixed to the buses. F1 is the driver's view, which is the thing you use to drive. F2 is passenger view, and F3 is outside view. These three are fixed to the buses. F4 is not fixed to the bus, so if you're in F4 view and you drive the bus, your camera won't move. In all other... Your camera won't move about the map. Um, in all... Uh, in those other three views, F1 to F3, your camera won't move about the bus, but it will, will move about the map. So, um, in order to move about the map, so that means move your centre, you right click on the particular point of the map you right click on any so you can just go around now here's the bus in order to uh, I'm not assigned to any bus yet in order to do so you left click, left click on the bus and it asks you you click yes now the um, this is a bus that doesn't Come. It's a separate add-on to have this bus. It's the 0305, that one. But if you don't have the add-on, you have the AI version in, of this bus in this map. Now, I won't be looking through this bus because it's not a default bus. I just got it as an add-on. Now, um, so I will be looking at a different bus. So that's F1 view, F2 view, F3 view, I'll explain it detailly. Now let's go back. So, let's look at the this menu. In order to, to show or hide this menu, you can press ALT. You press ALT to show or hide. And these five buttons on top are to control the bus. Uh, I think these are as well. And these are some game settings that changes the time, that changes the weather, that changes what to control the bus. And you can just switch between keyboard and mouse by pressing O on your keyboard, the letter O. And that, I, I've never used that. Um, that button shows you the navigation sign, so you know where you're going like that, um, so you have to go here sometimes they will write on which route goes this way which route goes that way and in this particular map some of these navigation signs they, some of them will hide and some of them will pop only when you're assigned to a route via this button here it's greyed out because um, assigned to a CPU controlled bus and so when you're not running on any route, 
some of them will hide and then the non-relating things will show but on most of the other maps it doesn't really happen it happens in Bremen Bremen is how you pronounce it and in this map Berlin Spandau and possibly Grundorf but most of the, the other maps I played the navigation sites just always show there so now let's go through this that button changes the bus, so that's a list of the active buses. Now, remember that the computer will spawn some AI buses, um, which will also happen here. Now, currently, that's the only one. So you can change between these buses. And that despawns the bus, so if you click that, that will go away. That spawns uh, the, blood, the bus you're assigned to, to another place. So if you also oh, that one is to now currently the bus is computer controlled. If you click that one, that cancel the computer control, so you can have the control. And you click that one to reactivate the computer control. Now every time you reactivate the computer control, it will go just go. It won't go on any route. It will just go or drive very far away and disappear and you click that button to despawn it so now let's spawn the bus no what's that now and the uh, default buses are MAN when you get the game you get these um, I've of course installed some so now let's have a look manufacturer these are not the the actual manufacturers these are the in-game manufacturers hello these are the in-game manufacturers oh, can you please stop lagging um, as you can see I've got loads but MAN is the one you start with and there's also an OAF o -R -F. I don't know, but that's, that was a subsidiary of MAN, and then they stopped making any. And, oh god. Now this doesn't really happen a lot. Don't know why it's... I don't know why it's lagging like that. These don't exist in default settings. Hello? Here, stop doing that, you stupid computer. Now you go away. I think I've done I've done some settings wrong. And um oh I think that might be the preview that's causing the trouble. Now these I installed it from some place I forgot. These are from these four are from um Berlin X ten that is from uh, some Hong Kong map but that's AI these two are also a separate add-on from this all the way down to this these are all um, the default MAM buses so that is a single decker rigid bus that is a single decker articulated and these are all double deckers Boarded by Union Wagon, I guess. I don't know. But um, for the simplicity, we will drive a um, single decker rigid bus. Because this video is not dedicated to show you how to drive, just some basic game stuff. Now, um, appearance is the livery. So now, that doesn't affect how the bus functions it only affects how the bus looks so that would be the um, default livery the old bvg livery and um, these are some uh, specifications now that's very important depot you have to select the right one uh, it, it usually selects it for you by default i guess it's 1992 so quite some spun out but I don't know but select the one corresponding to your map because that is the whole file uh, the whole, whole file 
is an umc2 file for a bus that that um, defines some sort of um, destination size and announcement stuff so basically root info that's computed into your bus if you choose the wrong whole file you won't be able to, to display the correct destination info in which case the passengers won't get on so um, so that's the whole file, that's your customized registration which you don't have to fill in that's your fleet number, just choose a random one and you can preview it here but I'm not doing that for this one so it lags and of course you need to choose a place to spawn and then press OK now when the bus is spawned, oh uh, by the way uh, uh, there's an additional menu, if you hold shift and press Y you can have this three things of I usually have those on because it tells me the info now the, if you go to the tutorial uh, from the launch menu it will tell you to to hold shift and, and then press press Z now that's because in on the German keyboard the Y and the Z are switched from the international or UK or most of the keyboards so if you have an international keyboard or a UK keyboard or whatever, here I have an international keyboard, um, you hold shift and then press Y. Now we are currently in F3 view so now, um, what's my next step? So now let's look at, uh, yeah, all, all those principle applies and uh, to reset your view, to reset all views from F1 to F3 all the views, you press spacebar to reset it and you press F1 to sit inside now while you're inside you can use the arrow keys to look through, these are all some preset views in each preset views you can adjust it however you want and the next time you go back to that preset view, it will be however you c you adjust it. And to reset all the adjusted views, to cancel all the customized views, you press spacebar. To cancel the current customized view, to reset the customized preset view, you press C. And you press spacebar to to go back to reset all the views now F2 uh, I normally don't stay in F2 but there isn't too much exciting here going on and F3 is just outside F1 is the driver's view where you do most of your stuff so um, collision so um, now collisions there you can collide with you can collide with three types of things AI pedestrians, AI vehicles and some objects but I'll leave yourself to explore it so I think I have collision turned off, let me just double check right so let's start the bus, you can move around now m on most of the buses you can click them this thing to remove the steering wheel so you can see the buttons you can actually use your mouse to physically interact with the bus uh, <clears throat> now this is a kinda old layout so it won't apply too much but to some modern buses so now let's have a look at firstly to start a bus you need to start ignition which is this one or you can press E on your keyboard E for echo now that's the ignition started and in order to start engine you need to hold I think these two, one is to start, the other one is to stop they're not clearly labelled, I'm not sure, I think that starts or you can just hold M on your keyboard M, the letter M 
Yes, that's to start, and that's your speedometer. Um, the um, these one, you should know that one. I'm not quite sure what it does. That's uh, ABS, which is on, I guess. No, I don't know. That means you can't go yet. And uh, these are your pressure gauge. That's the rear wheel, I believe. No, that's the front wheel. That's the rear wheel. Um, so the red needle shows how much brake is applied. That one, uh, no, the red needle shows how much foot brake is applied. Um, that one is how much pressure you have. I think the unit is bar, because otherwise it's stupid. I think you need to have seven or eight bars to move. So you just just have to wait here. Now let me walk you through some um, control. Uh, so on the keyboard, um, you need a numeric keypad, and you also need scroll lock. Scroll lock is to operate Heiterstellenbremser, which is stop brake. That will be explain explained later. Now let's have a look at the numeric keypad. Uh, you can't see because I hit the camera. Um, eight. is to apply uh, power which is this foot pedal two is to apply brake now notice that if you press you have to hold eight if you hold eight um, how much power or accelerator and how much brake apply is shown up here in the red menu now Notice the throttle. If I press it, it will go only go up to 0.85 of the um, of the accelerator. You, in order to go to 100%, you hold plus. That will usually activate kick down. And if you don't hold the plus key, it will go up to 85%. Now, as soon as you release the button. It will come down to zero, but for the brake, it works. It works differently. If you hold the brake all the way down, it will apply all the way up to hundred percent. If you release the brake, if you release the num two button, it won't release the brake. In order to release the brake, you hold the plus key. The plus key, basically, the plus key releases the brake, and the two key. It applies the brake, but two key. If you release two, it won't release brake. It will hold it at how however much you just applied. And plus key. If you just press it, it will just release a bit. You have to press it all the way until it's released. If you release the plus key, it will just stay on how much brake it's applied. Oh, there's another way to release brake. If is that if you press the accelerator a bit. It will release the brake completely. Now uh, let's put the steering wheel back. Um, <clears throat> in order to steer, you press four to steer left, six to steer right. Know that it won't steer to center. And if you press five, it will steer to center, like that. And um, one and three key don't do anything by default. But you can program those two keys to do other things. Seven is indicator left. Nine is indicator right. Dot, the uh, uh, full stop or the dot, is to uh, cancel indicator. So that's right. Cancel left. Cancel like that. <coughs> and oh, and on the top row there's a num lock which doesn't do anything and next to that there's forward slash asterisk and a minus sign those three are the door controls depending on what bus you have they do different things so you have to discover that or watch one of the upcoming lend diesel plus videos which i shall normally explain the door buttons but um 
on this particular boss. Yeah, so basically forward slash, num forward slash, num asterisk, and num minus. These three buttons control the doors. On this boss, uh, that's forward slash control start button, and um, asterisk control start button, and that is the minus button, respectively. And um, German buzzes, a lot of German buzzes have automatic doors. So uh, I'll just briefly explain this boss in particular and and other and the M A N single decker uh, articulated boss and double deckers that come with this map without any add-ons. They have the same door control. So basically, you can only control the front door. The back door you can't open or close it, but you can unlock or lock it. To unlock it, you pull this or you press this. In real t in real life, you pull it. So if it's pulled up, the back door is uh, unlocked. So the passenger can open it. Now, when the back door is unlocked, the front door is also unlocked. You press that button to open the front wing, or that button to open the back wing. I know that is stupid. Or you can press both together on your keyboard. And um, you have to unlock the door first to open the front door or close the front door. Now you will notice the, that clicking, that some sort of air sound. That's the stop brake. On most of German buses, when you unlock the door, the stop brake comes on automatically. Now that's the stop break, it's marked with an H. Um, <coughs> H stands for Heiterstellenbremse, which is stop break in German. Now um, the keyboard button corresponding to stop break is the scroll lock. So basically what stop break does is that it applies about 6 bars of foot break. This, no. But it just applies some sort of foot brake, an amount of foot brake, but it replaces handbrake. It doesn't replace it completely. When you stop, when you part the bus, you apply handbrake. But if you're driving, if you're at, if you're stopping for a traffic signal, or stopping for a bus stop, you apply stop brake instead of handbrake. <coughs> Now, uh, you normally use the stop brake right button only when you're waiting for a traffic light because when you're at a bus stop, you unlock the door, in which case it applies the stop brake right automatically. Over here, we have a gear selector. Most of the buses have automatic gear selector. On this one, it's a three button, which means you can't lock a gear, but you normally don't need to. And you can press it or you can use on the keyboard D, N and R buttons which represent D, N and R of course. On the keyboard the D button uh, will put you in forward gear, N button will put you in neutral and R button will put you in reverse. Now notice that if you're in reverse you can't go in uh, drive, you have to go in neutral first in order to go in drive. And you can notice on this bus, if you put it in drive, it will stay in the first gear if you're idle. It's, I think it's the case for most of the German buses, but when you're driving along, you shouldn't put it in neutral. You should leave it in drive at all time until you're about to park and leave the bus. <coughs> now, normally, if you apply stop brake, that is that, or unlocked or in which case it applies stop brake. If it applies stop brake, the bus will go into neutral, even though you're in drive. It will go into neutral. As soon as you release it, it will go into gear. Now on this bus, as soon as you turn the stop brake off, it releases the stop brake. But on some newer buses like Citaro or MA and Lion City, if you release, if you press the stop brake off, it won't release stop brake until you press the accelerator. Handbrake won't put the gearbox in neutral, but stop brake will on German buses, but on British buses, handbrake will put the bus in neutral. 
So, you should leave it in drive at all time and um, let's release the handbrake and drive around. Uh, to The handbrake button on keyboard is the period or a, a full stop. I've been programming too much that I... I mean, not programming, computering too much that I started to speak a bit American. Uh, so, it's not the num... num dot, it's just a dot next to comma. That applies or release handbrake. And, um... Now let's put handbrake on first, and what else? The F button is the light thing. L button is to turn the headlamps on. Now when your headlamps on and you press F, it will just turn on the high beam. But if your headlamps are off and you press F, it holds the high beam. And um, and then 1 and 2, not numeric keypad, 1 and 2 will lock it in first or second gear if applicable. On this bus, no, it won't. And now this is a great thing about OMC2. If you have automatic, you have to drive it in automatic. If you have a manual, you have to drive it in manual. You can't change the settings. It's just how it is, how the bus is. Now and um, and uh, if you hold Shift and then press L, that would be a parking light. Or you can also trigger through this that's full lamp that's parking lamps um <coughs> what else um oh by the way q is the that is not the clutch clutch is tab i don't know why it does something but if you you've got a clutch pad that's um tab q is this what it does is it announces the next stop now um the old German buses don't have automatic announcements, so you have to announce it manually. You press that button, that button, or Q on the keyboard to announce the next stop. On the British bus, however, it's either automatic or no announcement at all. So space bar to receive you, and the button B is the warning light, warning indicators. Um, what else have I missed? H is horn. Um, O is to change from uh, mouse uh, between mouse and keyboard. That would be your power, and that's break. And I normally use mouse control when I don't want eighty-five percent throttle or. Well, accelerator. I don't know why it says throttle. Those buses run on diesel, and diesel engines don't really have throttle. And let's have a look at that IBIS machine, which sets your um, destination and um, the, your, which sets your destination. But on most of the buses, it also sets the announcement and things. So that's IBIS, that sets destination, that, well actually that sets announcements, which also sets destination board on some, very few of them, oh by the way that's aircon, on very few of them, you, oh that's not aircon, that's heater, it's not aircon, that sets announcement, on some of them you need to set the destination board man, uh, separately, and that's the ticket machine, but on most of the modern buses, the ticket machine, the announcement and destination board are integrated into a single machine. That's your change, um, I'll explain that in a separate video, that will be explained in a separate video, so will that be, oh and W is the wiper. Of course, different buses have different wiper control. Normally, if you press W, it's full wiper, which will go like this. If you press, if you hold Shift and then press W, it's slow wiper, which will wipe and then stop and then wipe. Um, control W is to watch the windscreen. And of course that works. 
Oh, there. And that's the window. So now let's have a go. Um. <coughs> So, um, this video is about to end. Now, before I end this, let me show, let me just drive around. I will drive out of here and from here and through this and back here again. So, basically, a loop to show you briefly how I would drive and how you should drive. Now, so, um, <coughs> yeah, so when you stop, you apply a uh, stop brake instead, and of course, release your foot brake. Don't apply handbrake on a German bus, apply stop brake, but on br a British bus, you should apply handbrake. Um, <coughs> so, um, and for more information on the game, uh, you should check out some future videos which I haven't made yet, and in which I will be explaining some routes and some specific buses and ticket selling technique. I've just pressed O to change to mouse because I want just a bit accelerator which can't be achieved on keyboard. And then I, I, I'm now back to keyboard again. I prefer driving keyboard, some people prefer mouse. It's about what you like. <laughs> now these buses are actually quite not so powerful so you might want to use some kick down occasionally look at here they have the ambulance Oops. You shouldn't really go on the curb. But it sometimes happens. Now, as you may be able to hear, when I apply for brake, the retarder comes on, and most of the buses have automatic retarder. And by the way, you can press P to pause the game completely, that will cut off all the audios, including your announcement. So, if if your boss just plays an announcement, and you press P to pause the game, and you resume it, the announcement won't continue. It will cut off all the sound. Um, so you press P to pause the game, or you can press Escape. That will also pause the game. 
and but you can't do anything to the game but if you press P you can still move around the view and stuff oh did I forget to mention that if you hold foot brake at stop it will, um, it will also put the bus into neutral um, so to stop the bus you can hold the M key which presses this button and press E to turn it completely off and so if you go to escape you can go back to the game start a new game which well, that will trigger the launcher and you can save game which I haven't done that's options which are settings sometimes it hides behind the menu which is wrong or you can quit to see now that is a problem sometimes it, it shows behind the previous menu and you can't press it now in order to do so you can use another way to quit the game which is control Q that will pop this up and you press yes to exit the game so I am going to end the video here I hope you learned some basic stuff on how to uh, simple how to simply control the um, uh, this OMC2 game and I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time good night